2020 has naturally been an extremely difficult year. Indeed, a year that many people would prefer to forget. But not even Covid can stop the production of wine. And the new vintage, the 2020 vintage, is already appearing in the shops. We're off to New Zealand to taste a young Pinot Gris, and it's coming right up. Hi guys, welcome to yet another edition of uh, Big On Wine, the show which, uh, as I'm sure you know by now, brings you news, clues and reviews. Indeed, we attempt to keep you up to speed about just about everything that's happening in the world of wine. And my wine of the week for this week is indeed from the 2020 vintage, and it's this one here. It goes under the name of Stone Lee Wild Valley Wild Fermented Pinot Gris, and the vintage 2020. And this wine comes in for a price where I am of just a tad under 14 euro a bottle. Okay, we're dealing here, of course, with the 2020 vintage. And in the Northern Hemisphere, the grape harvest takes place in, what, August, September, October. But of course, in the Southern Hemisphere, New Zealand, of course, uh, the grape harvest takes place in the spring. So this wine is already a roughly, uh, what, six, six to nine months old. OK, let's fill you in on the backstory to this particular wine. The wine is from uh, Stonely Vineyards and they're based in Rapaura. And Rapaura is 15 kilometres or so west of the town of Blenheim on the northern tip of the South Island of New Zealand. Right, the grape in question is the Pinot Gris or the Pinot Grigio. And we know that the Pinot Gris does extremely well in the eastern side of France, in Alsace, and also in the mountains of northeastern Italy. Right. Normally we associate uh, New Zealand with the Sauvignon Blanc, or even with Pinot Noir or Riesling, but here we've got something completely different. Now, fresh, crisp and vibrant is the style that's promised by uh, Stoneleys winemaker, Jamie Marfell. Let's see whether his promises actually come to fruition in this particular wine here. It's an off-dry wine with 10 grams uh, per litre of residual sugar. Take a look at the wine in the glass. And as we can see, the wine has got uh, um, of that light straw gold colour. Is there even a little hint of something else in there? Maybe not pink, but it's an extremely interesting colour on this wine. Also, maybe a little bit of fermentation still in progress. There's a few bubbles around the bottom of the glass. It's interesting. Right. Now let's turn our attention to the nose on this particular wine. Let's see what this uh, wine is going to give us. I have a feeling the uh, aromas may be rather exotic here. Let's give it a try. Oh yes, now <laughs> this has got an absolutely fantastic uh, nose on the wine. Um, really big nose. Um, tropical fruit uh, in spades. Um, tropical fruit, let's see if we can put a name on it. Um, Pear and peach, peach perhaps, a peach and apple, apple and peach in the mix here. A hint of honey melon also, I think, and also that kind of, that kind of aroma which I associate with a country garden in England in the summer, a kind of a honeysuckle sweetness on this wine. A very, very giving big nose on this wine. Lovely. All right. Let's turn our attention now to the wine in the palate. Let's give it a try. Here we go. Wow. Now that is interesting. That is interesting. It's a real mouth-filling experience. That's the only word I can find for it. Very intense tropical fruit, mouth-filling, sweet 
dish. It's an off dry wine with 10 grams of residual sugar, but by no means sweet. It's right on the borderline between dry and off dry. Very, very appealing. Um, tropical fruit, sweet spice. Um, it also has a very nice acidity to the wine, so the balance is extremely good. I'm picking up, in addition to that, peach and apple, I'm picking up um, hints of uh, something more orangey. Clementine, nectarine, honey perhaps. It has a very, very smooth, creamy consistency as well, this wine. The finish is long, it's fruity, it has a little bit of toastiness to it, but it's that intense fruitiness and the sweet spice which lingers long in the mouth. Wow, this is an interesting wine. It has to be tried, it really does. Um, what are we gonna be eating with this? Well, let's uh, have a think. Um, oh, now this is a challenge. I think what we need with the wine like this is pink fleshed fish. So that would be my first choice. So salmon, rainbow trout, tuna even. Um, and I think this would stretch to seafood, chicken and turkey too. Now this is definitely an option for the Christmas or New Year table. This one will really knock your guests for six. They will have never tasted anything like this. Absolutely lovely stuff. All right, let's bring you the heads up on this one. This is a new vintage white from a wine region of New Zealand that enjoys a fantastic reputation, Marlborough. This time, not a Riesling or a Sauvignon Blanc, but an absolutely luscious Pinot Gris. Ripe tropical fruit, bounteous acidity, and all this for just $13.99 where I am. My verdict, four stars plus out of five. Okay, folks, many, many thanks for tuning in and checking out this week's video. And of course, this was a little introduction to an absolutely gorgeous Pinot Gris from the South Island of New Zealand. Stonely, Wild Valley, Wild Fermented Pinot Gris. Lovely stuff indeed. Okay, if you've enjoyed what you've seen and heard, then please do feel free to give us a big thumbs up. Yep, give us a like. We do enjoy getting those. Drop a comment down below. Why don't you share the video around to your heart's content? And if you haven't done so already, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And while you're about it, why not hit that little bell icon down below and you'll be informed as soon as every new video is uploaded. And naturally, I'll be back again next week with another great wine of the week for you. But uh, until we meet again, this is Tony Melville signing off and saying, hey, take care out there. Be good to each other. Enjoy your wines. And cheers.